So today we are going to start with the story, the thief story. It is the second chapter of your supplementary book. This story is written by Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond is a very famous children's story writer, or you can say a children's author. All of you must have heard his name so many times in class nine and in class eight. I would just give you a brief introduction of him still. Uh, Ruskin Bond is an Indian author of British descent. British descent means his parents were uh, British. He used to live in Missouri. That is why uh, most of his stories were dealing with the air condition, like the weather and the people of Missouri. And you can very well feel most of the stories revolve around Missouri. He has been awarded the Saiti Academy Award for his book, Our Trees Still Grow in Dera. Dera means over here, Dera Doon. Uh, he has received the award in 1992. Uh, it was one of his English novels. And he has also been awarded the Padma Shri in 1999 and the Padma Bhushan in 2014. So you can understand how well recognized this person is. And he's mainly recognized for his role in the growth of children's literature in India. But before we move on to something else, I would like to tell you about my own favorite Ruskin Bond story. When I was very young, uh, one of my teachers gave me to read the book named The Room on the Roof. It was his first novel. That means it was Ruskin Bond's written first novel. He wrote it when he was 21 years old. And this room on the roof, why it created such an effect in my mind, I'm still not aware of it. But it uh, actually tickled my imagination. I always imagined that one room, which is on the roof. Uh, usually, whenever I imagine that room, that room is full of colors, that room is full of posters, the room is full of books, and there is one small cozy place where I can sit and draw and write and read. And all these things just revolve around my mind whenever I think of that uh, book, The Room on the Roof. And uh, there is one more book called Rusty, which you all can also try. The Room on the Roof and the Rusty are the two most famous books written by Ruskin Bond. And if not the most famous, but they were my most favorite books. So you have now got an idea that how Ruskin Bond have actually uh, been successful in creating or um, inculcating the imaginativeness and the creativity in young minds. So uh, we are moving on to the objectives of the story. The st in from the story here, we are going to remember the storyline. We are going to understand the plot of the story. We are going to remember the various new words from the story. And whenever we are remembering the various new words, we won't even forget to reuse them in our uh, writing, in our questions and answers, in our creative writing sections, letters, essays, stories, whatever we are writing. We would always try to bring out these new words. As I always tell you, that as you bring out new vocabs or new words in your writing, your writing will be enriched and the examiner who would be checking your board copies would be enchanted while they'll be reading your copies or reading your answer sheets because he's over there checking, he or she is over there checking more than 100 or more than 150 copies. So if you give something new, your marks would also be different from others. So do not forget to reuse these new words, okay? And uh, the fifth is the most important point, according to me, as I always tell you, whatever stories you're reading, whatever stories you're understanding, do not ever forget to relate them with your real life experiences, because English is not just not, not just English. It gives you a, a, a better view or perspective of the world around you, a better view of the world or the real things around you so whatever you're reading you try to put that thing in your mind and your heart and you try to learn something new for him and you add and the sixth point is that you should also understand about the various moral values that the story wants to inculcate in your mind number seven is that you will evaluate the importance of goodness kindness and truth as described in this story and number eight is justify the title of the story the title of the story is The Thief's Story. But before I go into the story right away, I would like to narrate one of my experiences with a few girls which I used to deal with 
uh, when we used to do some works from college, uh, we used to go there. There was one orphanage and uh, you in that orphanage, uh, girls were kept like in pairs. One older girl used to take care of one younger girl. And there was one young girl who was very small and he was only five years old. He was the youngest in the whole orphanage. And she was the youngest in the whole orphanage because it was uh, only a girl's orphanage. And this girl's name was Pari. And she was very dark complexioned, very dark complexioned. And you know what her parents did? Her parents left her on the railway track because she had so much of dark complexion and she was a girl. That is why her parents left her in the, on the railway track. Some of the neighbors or some of the people who found her brought her to this orphanage. And her body uh, grew up over here and um, she was almost five and a half years old uh, now. And um, we, we realized that Pari was growing a habit of stealing things. It is called kleptomaniac. It is the person who has a habit of stealing things without necessity. Is called That person is called a kleptomaniac. One who steals things uh, like a habit. It, she doesn't need those things always, but she, still she goes on stealing those things. So Pari had a peculiar kleptomaniac uh, uh, symptom, which we found in her. And when she was allotted to one of the elder girls, her name was Sapna. Sapna started taking care of Pari a lot. Sapna, Sapna was like other soul, the soul of Pari. She was always with Pari. Sapna was cooking, Pari was sitting on her lap. Sapna was uh, brooming the whole area. Sapna was, uh, Pari was lagging behind Sapna and always following her. And Sapna loved Pari so, so, so very much that... Um, we found them all the time together. Whatever mistakes Pari did, Sapna used to take them on her head that oh, Pari has broken something. Sapna goes and tell the other people, no, that is not done by Pari. I have done it. It's my mistake. So we found a very, very unnatural, unusual, and a very beautiful bond growing between these two girls, Sapna and Pari. And uh, slowly we realized as Pari went on growing up, uh, she was um, actually moving away from her kleptomaniac habits. She's actually stopped stealing things. It was maybe due to the lack of love that Pari received in her childhood that she has grown, a, she had grown a love towards different material things. And when Sapna gave her so much importance, so much love and so much care, uh, Pari actually forgot about materials, about things, all the small things like pencil, rubber, clutches, rubber bands, all the small things that she used to steal. He forgot about or she forgot about all those things and all she wanted was Sapna's attention, her love, her care and nothing else matters to her now, still now. And this is the year, this year uh, in the in the previous, in the January, Sapna left our home. Sapna was older than her and Sapna, it is a rule of the home that whoever grows, uh, gives the uh, higher secondary exam would leave the home and would lead a life uh, like her own. The, the relatives who had left her over there would take her away. So Sapna left the home this year and we, she has actually left behind a completely changed Pari, what we have got, what we have got when Pari came up, Pari has changed so much, so much so that she's responsible, she's caring about the other junior girls, and this year even one junior girl has been assigned to Pari to take care of, and she's responsible, she's caring, she's loving, she's a completely changed person that we see today. So I told you this story because the story that we are going to deal uh, today is something like this. It is about trust and bonding. It is about the basic human nature of loving and kindness. Okay, so we are going to straight away now go to the story. The story is about Anil and Anil was 25 years old writer. He was living his life very carelessly. He was struggling to write for earning the money to run his life. That means he was a struggling writer. Who is a struggling writer? 
one who is writing a lot but doesn't give it get any publisher who can publish his work so anil is 25 years old and he's a writer and he's struggling because his work has not yet been published because once his work get published he would be paid for it but he has not yet been paid that is why he is still struggling one day anil uh, goes to watch a wrestling match and he meets harry there there is a spelling mistake over there you all would understand he meets harry there harry is a 15 years old boy and he introduces to anil as uh, uh, himself as harry singh harry used uh, his old formula to flatter the person now harry is the thief over here whose story we are reading about harry singh is the thief the young thief 15 years old thief who flatter person and gain their confidence and then rob them and go away when harry met anil he found anil to be a very simple and innocent person and harry found that it is it would be very easy to rob anil 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 was impressed uh, with harry and he promised that he would teach him how to read and write and harry even uh, told anil that i may even uh, cook you food but anil was confident that he is not going to take harry with him because he could not pay him but ultimately harry's uh, harry's words harry's pleadings convinced anil and anil took him to uh, his own house and they both started leaving happily okay one day harry saw that anil had brought a bundle of notes he saw him keeping them under the mattress as harry saw the bundle of notes so his evil spirit aroused in his mind what is the evil spirit all his black thoughts about stealing the money robbing anil came up in his mind now before this incident as i have taken only the summary the main important incidents in the in the pda for the video i'll just explain some one more incident like uh, whenever in the morning anil went out to work Harry used to go to shop for the day. The groceries, the vegetables, and all those kind of things. Harry used to go out and shop. And every day, whatever money was given to Harry to bring these things, he took one rupee every day from that money. That means he stole one rupee from Anil every day. Anil even knew about the fact, but he never thought of saying anything to Harry because that one rupee you can understand that uh, it is written a long time ago, and one rupee, two rupee were also very important at that time, especially for a person who is struggling himself. But still, he never said anything to An uh, Harry. Okay, and one day when Anil brought a bundle of note and kept it under the mattress, that also in front of Hari. Okay, he knew that Hari used to steal money from him, but he never thought of hiding that money. He kept that money in front of Hari's eyes, and when Hari saw the money, all his evil thoughts of robbing Anil came into his mind again. He decided to rob Anil that night only. That night only, he thought that I should take away the money and go. Okay. After taking dinner, Anil slept calmly. Anil is so patient. We can see the calmness, the kindness, and the um, the genuinity in Arin, uh, Anil as he kept the money in front of Hari, and he slept calmly. He had no anxiety that his money can be stolen. He had no such anxiety. Hari crept to the bed and slipped his hand under the mattress. He slept the hand under the mattress to take away the money. He got the notes and ran away from there. He left for the railway station to board a train to board a train, the Lucknow Express, to move out of the city. There is a little mistake over here. He actually boarded the train to move out of the city, not to move to Lucknow, but to move out of the city. Okay, and uh, actually at first he thought that no, let let me not steal it. But then the thought usually, if you are in extreme need. You never think that ये नहीं करना चाहिए, वो नहीं करना चाहिए. You always think that after I do this, I am going to move away from here. I am going to run away from here. So nobody is going to know. I don't even have to face Anil after this. So all these evil thoughts made him steal or rob Anil, and he went to the railway station and he took the Lucknow Express to. He he thought of taking the Lucknow Express. He didn't take, but he thought of taking the Lucknow Express and moving away from the city. He missed it. By chance, he missed the Lucknow Express. He wandered through the bazaar, and it was raining. The drizzles came up, and Hari Singh was completely wet. When he missed the uh, train, he moved out of the station. As a conflict 
started in his mind that whether to go or not to go and he went into the bazaar he started wandering wandering means walking without no purpose he started wandering in the bazaar it was raining it was drizzling and hari singh was getting wet there was a conflict in his mind he did not want to betray the faith of anil why is the conflict is in is in anil's mind as i told you that hari was very much anxious about um, her stealing things he was she was always stealing things and uh, she never uh, thought of uh, not doing it but when sapna took so much care and showed so much love to her but she slowly and slowly changed maybe because there would have been a conflict in her mind going on that if somebody loves me so much if somebody cares for me so much would i break that trust would i take away or betray that faith similar thing was going on in the mind of hari because he found anil trusting him without anything in his mind he trusted anil trusted and had faith on hari blindly and that rose the conflict in his mind that whether i should go or i should stay moreover anil was teaching how to teaching hari how to ride and add numbers that could transform his life he thought that he is teaching me he is teaching me how to read and write if i take a little bit of courage and i take a little bit of more effort then i give a little bit of more effort it could transform my life it could change my life altogether so he left the railway station at that very moment he came to a field and sat on a bench just then heavy run was going on it was heavily raining the chilled wind was blowing and this man was sitting there this young man of 15 16 years old was sitting there on the park bench thinking what to do in one side is his head who is saying rob that money and go away and the other side is his heart what is the situation called the situation is called a dilemma what is it called it is called a dilemma when we are not able to decide between or choose between two important decisions whether to do this or to do that that is called a dilemma when our mind and heart makes a uh, war okay that is a dilemma so uh, hari over here is going through a dilemma whether to follow his mind and run away or to follow his heart and stay there so and ultimately his mind or his heart won the game he felt guiltier he felt very guilty that anil trusted so much in me and i am doing this to him as he had cheated an innocent person he found that anil was the most innocent person he could imagine his shirt and pajamas wedged to his body because it was wet due to the rain wedged means sticking very close to the body sticking to his body whenever we wear some clothes and we put water on it it sticks to our body our skin right that is called wedged to his body because it was wet due to rain okay. it was raining very heavily his clothes were sticking to his body he was feeling guilty he was he was, he was having a conflict in his mind he wanted to go back and there was a chilly wind blowing that night Hari Singh had a change of heart that night. He, his heart was changed because of the innocence and the trust and the faith that Anil had on him. He decided to return to Anil and keep the money under the pillow. He reached the room and placed the money back. He placed back the money again under the pillow, okay, or under the mattress. The next morning he woke up a bit late and Anil had already made his tea. Anil was making tea for him. Look at the love and bonding they are having like brothers. The Anil is making tea for him. And Anil offered Hari Singh rupees 50 saying he had earned it. And Anil gave rupees 50 to Hari and he said you have given me a lot of service and you have earned this money and I have I I will be giving it to you as I have earned it. How he has earned it? by publishing one of his books to the publishers or by selling one of his books to the publishers and he also promised hari that he is going to regularly pay him after that hari kept the note in his hand hari took the note in his hand he realized that the note was still wet the note was still wet why was it wet because the note was with him, him or in his pocket when he was getting drenched in the rain last night so uh, you keep some 
dry money under the mattress in the night and on the morning you find uh, the person who always wakes up first sleeping and then you find the money also wet so it must be or obviously be that anil has realized that hari actually wanted to steal that money because it was wet and hari was also sleeping very till very late so anil must have realized that hari singh wanted to steal that money but he has not has not even said a word about it anil was not sad anil was not uh, any much and in, in not guilty that he trusted that man but he was happy that he has been able to change the mind of this man okay so uh, this story mainly revolves around this moral values in human beings and relations how relations are important in our life and how such values can change a person too say for example if we talk about the basic moral values like acceptance acceptance we are lacking so much of acceptance now in our life and you may think that changing your own moral values would not be that important because uh there is there is so many people around you so 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 many so if you only changed how would it matter but let me tell you let me tell you if one person if your changing matters one person and looking at you two more people changes then looking at two more people three more would change and looking at those three four will change it's a chain it's a chain for goodness change for kindness change for accepting okay now what is acceptance say for example we want variety in everything we want variety in food we have so many cuisine we have thai cuisine we have chinese cuisine we have mughlai cuisine we have so many types of cuisines so we want variety in food we have so many dresses kinds of dresses are there so we need variety in dresses we need variety in uh, notebooks we need variety in pen we need variety in mobile phones we need variety in apps we need variety in everything but when there are various kind of people and their values and their work we don't uh, understand that variety and we are not ready to accept that then just tell me if we are ready to accept variety in everything then why not in human beings why can't we just accept the different religions the different castes the different colors the different creeds the different cultures and the different set of moral values so it is very difficult uh, to uh, i know sometimes it is very difficult to understand from someone else's perspective but that is what acceptance is talking about you have to place your feet in someone else's shoes and try to understand that perspective the other perspective of the man that is what acceptance is all about and it's high time that we should inculcate this moral values like acceptance like honesty in us why honesty because i have told you several times in class that if you are honest you are always fearless because the honest person never needs to be afraid of anything those who are afraid they are liars or maybe they are some people who have done wrong who have done something wrong if you are right and if you are honest you don't have to fear about anything a life without fear so beautiful it would be so always white lies are okay which does not harm people what are white lies which does not harm people but honesty is a uh, is a very essential uh, element in our moral set of values okay and diligence diligence means hard work whenever you find yourself working hard remember you are going to be paid off for that work if you are not uh, putting yourself in a situation when you are wasting your time you are putting on effort you are putting on hard work you are definitely to be rewarded for that and to put on their hard work what you need you need determination and perseverance i want to want you all to be determined to set your goal and go for it this board exams not only this board exams but in life also but for now the preliminary goal that you have is to achieve a better result in the board exams and remember always not having a better result in the board exams would be the only thing in your life don't forget to accept other human don't forget to be honest don't forget to be forgiving don't forget to be kind and most important of all don't forget to have the faith 
in your loved ones, in your friends, and those people who matter in your life. That is all about this story, the thief story. I want you people to go through the whole story line by line. And if you have any kind of problem, we can discuss those things. And we are also going to discuss the questions and answers from the book as well as from the previous year's questions, questions um, in the next classes. Thank you.